that. It's like a little puzzle thing that Sermon got from you. You've got to get this, these, you've got to get all this apart. Look at that. I think it's a puzzle that you give to people when you don't like them. And the reason I think that is because like every puzzle, it's really annoying. Well, fine, I'll solve it. <laughs> I've done it, I've done it. I got it apart, yes. Slight problem now, I guess, is, is getting it back together. Ooh, I've got an idea. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Intro. Welcome to Tuesday Morning. My name is Paul Lewis. Today, mm, today we're going to talk about build tooling. Now, most of the places I've worked have had a range of tooling, whether it's the smallest company I've worked in all the way up to Google, there's the whole range. And my own personal preference on tooling is to keep it really simple. And that's for a few reasons, but the most important one is things go wrong. And when things go wrong, I would like to know that I'm as close to the compiled code as possible. That's important to me. So I like to make sure that I've kept things as minimal as possible. And I know everybody's different and there's quite a lot that can go into tooling to make sure that you've got caching right and you've got hashing here and you've got images compressed and all those things. And they are really super important. Don't mishear me, but for me, at least when I'm getting started on a project, I like to keep things super simple. And especially if you're getting started with web development, which I believe some of you are, you're probably going to find that the build tooling that you either inherit or that you look at and you get instructed to use is quite complicated and complex. And what I wanted to do was just share kind of my go-to, uh, at least starter build pipeline so that you've got some ideas of what you could actually maybe look at first and then kind of build up from there. Now, if you've got suggestions, drop those in the comments below. That is exactly what this is all about. It's a great opportunity to share, to bring suggestions, to kind of learn together. Um, but without further ado, let's jump into some stuff on screen and we'll talk things through. Okay, so what I've got on screen is, I mean, it's it's a it's a not a real project, obviously, because I've called it my project. I mean, who does that? You wouldn't do that with a real project. Anyway, inside of there, we have a script, which is app.js. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do console.log. Helps if you can type, Paul. Um, and I'm just gonna say hello. And in fact, you know what? I've also got this function here, this function foo, which returns bar. Not all that useful, but hey, let's just kind of go with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually, cause I wanna use the import module syntax um, so we're going to import uh, foo from foo.js. And that, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll pop that in there. Okay. So we're just going to do call foo because it's a function. And hopefully that'll just say hello bar, right? And that's the thing I want to get working. For older browsers, modules don't work yet. Well, they won't. They're never going to work because they're older browsers. That's the point. Um, newer browsers, yeah, get in there. Older browsers, no. If you need to support older browsers, then that's exactly where something like Rollup would come in. And I'm more of a Rollup person than anything else. Uh, as again, this is all personal preference. You may feel completely differently and that's completely fine. No problem, at least from my perspective. Um, me, I'm just gonna roll with Rollup. Unintentional pun, really quite happy with it. Let's keep going. All right, to get things started, what we need to do is we need to install Rollup and a couple of plugins with NPM and or Yarn or something. Uh, I'm an NPM person, again, because it keeps it simple. If you're brand new to web dev, you're gonna need to go to nodejs.org. I'll pop it in the description below. You're gonna need to get yourself a copy of Node and NPM, which comes with the installer as part of your default install. Get it for your platform, get it installed, and then we can go from there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install Rollup, Rollup plugin replace, and RimRaf. Those are the only three I feel like I need, but this is an NPM install, so it might take a while. Hi, 
Okay, that is done. So we can now dive into actually running it. So let me see what we've got. We've got this rollup JS, rollup config JS file, which normally you keep in the root. And what you do in there, I mean, this isn't a tutorial, just just so you know, I'm, I'm just gonna do this. If you want more documentation, I'm gonna link it below the rollup documentation. Go and have a read of that. It's very well done. Uh, it'll tell you what you need. And there's plenty of stuff on Stack Overflow and other places if you want to actually kind of deep dive into other things, but you know, whatever. So I'm just gonna export default, which is how you do it with rollup. And I'm gonna say, I think it's input. And I want it to make, to, I want it to take, what do I want? I want source scripts app.js and I want it to output, let me see. Uh, I think it's a file and I would like it to put it into a dist scripts app.js. Why not the compiled version? I'm gonna do format and immediately invoke function expression, iffy, um, which is an old school way of doing it. Um, goodness, it was, oh, maybe 10 years? No, it won't be 10 years. Maybe 10 years? I don't know. Been a while, it's been a while. Right, that should be enough to get that running. We've installed Rollup locally, as it says in locally to the node modules in this particular project. So we should be able to do npx, npx rollup dash c. And it ran. The npx, if you've not seen it, is it's like an executable uh, container for running stuff that's inside the node modules inside a given project. It means you don't have to necessarily install something globally. I mean, I, I'm actually fine with installing Rollup globally because I use it often enough and sure. But if you just install it locally, then NPX will do it. Dash C is the, I want to use a config and there's a Rollup config file, which we just wrote. So it'll pick that up, use that. And you can see it's actually converted the app.js to app.js. So let's go and have a look at that. Cool, so that's good. Um, that it seems like it's gonna work. Yeah, so you can see we've got the just console log. It's inlined the function from the other module. I mean, that's, it's not really messed with the code. It's wrapped it in an iffy function expression that is immediately invoked by calling the double, double parens there. So other things that we probably wanna do here, well, uh, there's this static folder. So the static contents are uh, necessarily movable, but actually, yes, no, let's do that next. Um, now, yes, my own personal preference is to do things in, as NPM scripts. Again, you may feel differently, completely fine, but we're gonna do a, we'll do a JavaScript task here, uh, and we're gonna do the npx rollup dash C there, and I'm gonna do a static in a moment, and if you've not seen it, you can do a build script in your package, Jason. I have a video. Oh, I've got enough videos to link to other videos. That's very exciting for me. I'm gonna link it up there, up there, up somewhere, and you'll see that. So let's do build. And in there, we are going to say npm run JavaScript and npm run static. That means when we've got the build script, you can do command shift B and you'll get NPM build in VS code, which is awesome. Uh, so copying static files, I would use, I mean, pff, why not rsync with rm, rm is, r is recursive, m means prune empty directories. And we want, was it source static over to dist? That should work. Let's find out, let's build. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so now our dist has got a script of scripts and a static, and inside there is the x, uh, x, x HTML? No, 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 Paul, no, not XHTML, HTML, just, just HTML. Paul, 2003 came calling, they want their XHTML back. Um, right, cool, so that's all good. So this should, in theory, run. Pro tip time, um, if you want to just quickly test your projects, there's another great NPM project, which I will link below called HTTP server. Uh, I found this out thanks to Jake Archibald. Um, so you can just run HTTP server, pop like that, and the current folder will be served. It's um, very friendly towards things like uh, testing gzip. 
uh, and it just it just works and it's great. So uh, if you're st uh, struggling uh, for a, a little server you can run locally, now you know. So that's HT18. Now in the dist folder uh, and then static, we have our HTML and you can see that we've got hello bar, which means everything is kind of working as it should. Now, back to the plugin replace and why I included plugin replace. It's not a, a big mystery. It's because I want to replace some stuff. So if I do something like version like this, which is my uh, typical path, and I'll show you why I do something like this versioning in just a moment. What we need to do in order to make this work on at least this side is we would import replace from roll up plugin replace well done vs code you got it right first time Boop. and we can do plugins and in here we want to replace and now i have to try and remember what the format of this is off the top of my head i want to replace anything that says version with let's just start by saying version <laughs> sure because that's that's a, a genuine version number and um, but we also have to tell it the delimiters delimiters i think it's delimiters let's find out uh the opening one is that the closing one is that and i wanted to do that that i think should work should we find out let's find out let's find out it's exciting let's find out okay it didn't crash it didn't break let's have a look at the dist app it says hello version so it's done the right thing it's actually replaced in our source it's replaced this with some other string now that's all good what i'd like to do instead is i'd actually let's say um equals require package dot json what i like to do i like to use the version that's actually in the package json as my version for including in the scripts uh, quite useful requiring it in will cause that JSON to get parsed and it will actually come through as an, an object so now we can say const version equals package 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 there we are I can't apparently type this morning package version there we are and we don't need to say version colon version because as of ES whatever version you can just if the key and the value are the same uh, variable, same name, value pair, then you can just put version and it knows that you mean version and then get a variable called version and use that as the value. It's very clever. I do, I, I do enjoy this kind of stuff. So now, all being well, what we will see in our dist is hello 0.01. 0.0.1 there we are versions uh 0.0.1 and that's really useful to me because over here let me just get rid of this a second okay um we can do uh it's npm version say patch boop and it jumps us to 0.0.2 or npm version minor npm version major okay so we're on 1.0 and we'll do another another patch 1.0.1 now the next time we build you see how we've gone to hello 1.0.1 really handy let me show you uh, a, a sort of an actual more realistic context for this I say more realistic it's not entirely realistic but it's useful enough um, I use it quite a lot when I'm versioning my service workers and in particular the caches that we use in the service workers I am not going to do a deep dive into the caches API or anything like that, or even service workers. I could do that if you would like. Drop a comment below. That's how this all works. And we'll go from there. However, for now, I'm going to show you what I would do in the caches API. Uh, so imagine this was running in a service worker. Oh, I mean, caches, the caches API is available in the window, so we can do it here anyway. Uh, let's see. We will do caches. Oh, I'll tell you what. We'll do an async function go. Yeah, that's a good name for it. And then we're going to just call go, go, uh, and inside of there we're going to await caches dot open, and we're going to say something like app and then version, version, okay. 
All right, so that's the, this is gonna be a cache. So we'll do const cache equals caches.open. Now, once our cache is there, we can say cache dot add all, and then we just give it an array. And you can give it an array of strings and it goes off and fetches those, which is really awesome. So I'll do static images. Oh wait, no, I don't need, I'm already in the static folder for this. So it's images and then something like thumbnail dot JPEG. Cool, and we'll actually say we will await, and we will await that. That, I think, should work. If not, we'll find out pretty quickly. Again, so let's have a look. Uh, oh, do you know what you've got to do, Paul? You've got to actually rerun your server. <laughs> there we are. Now, it may look like nothing happened here, but in fact, if we go over to the application tab, you'll see that cache storage now has a little spinny down arrow. I love a good spinny down arrow, so we'll tap on that. You see we've got app double underscore, one zero one. So we're automatically versioning and you can see we've pulled in the thumbnail and it's stored in the cache and we're ready to go. In the future, if we bump it to 1.0.2 or whatever, we can create a separate cache for that and we can do things like cache resolution where we copy things from the old cache to the new cache or we can delete the, the old caches that we no longer need, all those kinds of things, which is a typical pattern that you see in service workers. And you kind of get that built in by coupling uh, your version back to the package JSON version. All right, final thing in this uh, is the fact that the dist might get a little bit full over time, if you like. And you might remember uh, right at the start, I imported RimRaf. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import RimRaf, RimRaf, RimRaf from RimRaf, beep, beep, beep. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do RimRaf. And in case you're wondering, RimRaf uh, is a uh, node module that will let you delete. Uh, it's like RMRF. Oh, RimRaf, RMRF. <gasps> I just figured it out on camera. Right, RimRaf.sync, and then you give it a path. Now, the, in the Docs, it says don't use the sync version, but I'm in a build script and I don't, really don't mind. So I'm just gonna get rid of the dist folder. Um, that is going to clear out the dist folder every time so that we get a fresh build every time we do it. You probably won't see it because it deletes it and rebuilds it really quickly. But in the event that I had, let's just say pff, somehow I had some random file right in there. Now when I build, all being well, Random file is gone because we don't have a random file because we kind of recreated the disk folder uh, every single time. So in summary, what we've got here is we have uh, RimRaf to delete the existing disk folder. We've got Rollup plugin replaced to do the versioning stuff. And then other than that, it is just a case of having Rollup to figure out the module stuff. Other than that, personally, there's not a lot I do as my default stuff. I can do another video if you like about a more advanced or the next things that I would do after this uh, starting point, if that would be helpful to you. So there you go. If you've enjoyed this one, don't forget to give it the thumbs up. That helps me a bunch. And I will catch you lovely folk on the flip side.